What up, Dodgers Nation? DMAC here. You can follow me at DMAC underscore LA. Who will take the Dodgers' final roster spots? Who will be on that Dodgers bench? I'll let you know in just a second, but quick reminder for our latest Dodgers news and rumors all season long. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Who do you want to see fill out that Dodgers bench? Do you want to see Kevin Pillar, Jake Lamb, Edwin Rios, Hanser Alberto. Do you want to see Gavin Lux? Austin Barnes, he's a shoo-in to make it, but let me know down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So just like that, we're closing in on Dodgers opening day. Dodgers at Rockies Friday, April 8th, a 105 first pitch. And now we have to figure out how this roster is going to shake out. Now, the difference this year is when the lockout ended, the MLB and the MLB Players Association, they agreed to expand the rosters from 26 to 28 through May 1st to compensate for that shortened spring training. So the Dodgers, as well as teams across the league, they're going to be carrying more pitch to start the season but today we're going to focus on who will be on the Dodgers bench because you got players out there that are making strong cases players that we didn't necessarily envision being on this Dodgers roster to start the year players like Jake Lamb and Kevin Pillar players that have an established history in this league but at this point in their career they are reclamation projects then you've got Gavin Lux you've got Edwin Rios Hanser Alberto Austin Barnes let's just get that one out of the way first. Of course, the Dodgers will be carrying two catchers, and Austin Barnes will be on the Dodgers 28-man opening day roster. You'll see him on the bench. He can go out there give you a competitive at-bat. We've seen him get clutch hits in the past, and really his value comes as a receiver, as a catcher. You know he's a great game caller. You know he's great at working with these Dodgers pitchers and get that strike at the bottom of the zone. He brings that tenacity. So Austin Barnes, of course, he's going to be on the Dodgers opening day roster. So that leaves five guys really competing for three spots. And it's all the aforementioned names we just talked about. Jake Lamb, Kevin Pillar, Edwin Rios, Gavin Lux, and Hanser Alberto. Now, as far as who's going to get these final spots, well, we have to start with Jake Lamb. Jake Lamb is getting a lot of buzz down at Dodgers Spring Training. I was just there last week, and a lot of people talking about Jake Lamb. You've got people calling him Rake Lamb. Now, the positives for him, left-handed bat. He can play third. He can play first. He can play corner outfield. And so far this spring, he's gone 8 for 20, slashing 400, 455, 800. He's hit two bombs, had two RBIs, eight strikeouts, and two walks. Now, we know his struggles. Now, if you look at since 2018, he's played for four teams. The D-backs, the A's, the White Sox, and the Blue Jays. And he's posted a 193, 309, 358 slash line with 29 home runs in those years. Now, before that, from 2016 to 2017, he was really emerging as a star. He slashed 248, 345, 498, but he also hit 59 home runs. He made the all-star team in 2017. He looked like he was going to be a foundational piece for the Arizona Diamondbacks, but unfortunately, he had that shoulder surgery, and it really derailed his career, and also his defensive metrics have taken a hit as well. So I think when it comes to Jake Lamb, when you consider the fact that they did sign him to a minor league contract, he can start the year down in AAA. While he does that, we'll see what happens. Will the Dodgers have injuries? Injuries, well, most of the time they do. And I think that when they do, Jake Lamb, he will be one of the first guys that does get called up. And I do think that he's going to have an impact in some capacity for the Dodgers this season. After what we saw last year, guys going down, Jake Lamb is going to have his opportunity this year. And just the fact that, like I said, he is on that minor league contract. He'll start down in AAA. And we'll see. Can Rake Lamb break down in AAA? Because if he does and guys struggle at the show, I think maybe they'll consider bringing him up at that point. Then also, like I said, when injuries happen, Jake Lamb is a guy that can come up. Now, we know the first base position, that's occupied by Freddie Freeman, and then behind him, you have Max Muncy. He's also capable of playing the hot corner, but when he gets his opportunity, you're going to most likely see him in those corner outfield spots and coming off the bench. Now, what I love about Rake Lamb is the fact that he rakes 
against right-handed pitching. For his career, a 938 OPS versus righties, a 557 OPS versus lefties. But like we saw last season, didn't have great thunder off the bench, consistent thunder off the bench. And he's a guy that if he continues to make this progress, and he seems like he's in a great place right now, that if he comes up and gets his opportunity, he might not ever give it back. That's how good he looks so far this spring. I just think the fact that he is on that minor league deal, they want to see more of him. They want to see if he can consistently produce down in AAA. And then if he does and you have those injuries and if guys struggle, then you give him his opportunity. So I don't think he makes that opening day roster, but I do think he gets his opportunity to have an impact this season. Now, next, let's talk about Kevin Pillar. So Kevin Pillar, he's two for 10 in four games. He's hitting 200. He made that nice diving catch out there in right field. Now, if you look at last season, a 90 WRC plus with the Mets in 124 games, 147 plate appearances, hit 15 bombs, had a 23.3 strikeout rate. That was his highest number in that category since 2014 and a 3.2 walk percentage. That was the lowest in his career. Now, a big plus for Kevin Pillar is what he can do defensively in that he can play all three outfield positions. He can play left, he can play center, he can play right. And if Cody Bellinger doesn't find his swing at the plate, maybe you see Kevin Pillar get some reps in center field if he makes that opening day roster. Now, for me, his defense has declined throughout the years. Yes, he's known for making those highlight plays and making those diving catches, but if you look at the advanced metrics, his defense has diminished throughout the years. And if you see, he's a below average bat at the plate. So he's another guy that I think the fact that you see him signed to that minor league contract, the Dodgers, they've taken a chance on him. They're going to see what he can do in AAA, and they're also going to monitor what happens at the big league level with Cody Bellinger, the injuries, and I don't think Kevin Pillar, he makes a spot on the Dodgers opening day roster. And then there's Edwin Rios. So to me, the feel-good story of the spring is the strong start of Edwin Rios. So far, he's slashing 500, 588, 1214 with an 1802 OPS. He's 7 for 14. He leads the Dodgers this spring in home runs with three, RBIs with seven, and one strikeout in 14 at-bats. And you saw the year he had last season. He goes four for 51. He had 18 strikeouts before he went down with that injury. He was riding a one for 40 slump. He was playing through that shoulder injury and then they realized, hey, this guy needs surgery. He had a partially torn right labrum and it just really sapped the power out of that shoulder. It really just destroyed kind of the timing of his swing. Really couldn't catch up to fastballs. It was just not getting it done last year and a lot of that was due to him playing through that injury. And look, you give the guy credit for trying to tough his way through that injury. But look, at the end of the day, you just can't play through those shoulder injuries. And when you look at Edwin Rios, before the nightmare start to the 2021 season, from 2019 to 2020, and 139 plate appearances in 60 games, he had a 150 WRC plus with 12 home runs. That's how he earned the nickname Babe Rios. So it's nice to see him performing well so far this spring. You see the strength back in his shoulder. And last night, he has an opposite field home run off a lefty. So Edwin Rios, to me, is definitely a guy that makes the Dodgers opening day 28-man roster. He's already on the 40-man roster. He can give you some positional versatility in the infield. Look, never forget, he was the third baseman on the field when the Dodgers won the World Series in 2020. So he's another guy who can DH. He can give you nice thunder off the bench. And I think that his potential is what really is so intriguing about the guy. I mean, you're late in the game. You need a bomb. You need a big hit. I want to see what he can do in those situations. And, and then there's Gavin Lux. So Gavin Lux, he's gotten off to a slow start this spring. He's one for 13, but that one hit was a home run. And I think Gavin Lux will make the Dodgers opening day roster. You remember, he was given that big runway at second base last season, and then he fills in for Corey Seager at shortstop after he breaks his hand. And then they call him up, and he's playing in the outfield. So the Dodgers, they're trying to see if they can develop him into this super utility man. And then also, he is a contingency plan if Trey Turner does not sign long-term with the team. So if the Dodgers don't lock up Trey Turner, I think Gavin Lux, he could be the guy that they see 
see as their shortstop in the future. So that's another thing you want to consider, too. The Dodgers are very heavily invested in Gavin Lux when you consider the role he could have for this team in the future. But look, the fact is, he came up last season in a very strong finish to the season. He had 367 in the month of September. You saw him get that clutch base hit against the Giants in Game 5 of the NLDS to set up Cody Bellinger's game-winning hit. So he's a guy that is still a work in progress. He's still trying to figure out how to be a more consistent hitter. When I spoke to Gavin Lux last week, and he talked about how really it's not about the adjustments as much as it's just really the will to win and going out there and being competitive. So don't sell your Gavin Lux stock just yet. Also remember, he has that positional versatility. He can play shortstop. He can play second base. He played some third base last year. He played center field. He played left field. So Gavin Lux definitely brings a lot to the table. And then there's Hanser Alberto. So he signed to a major league contract. He's going to be a guy that can come off the bench and give you a very competitive at bat as far as hitting for contact. He's a guy that almost never strikes out. He also almost never walks. So he's going to put the ball in play. And then also on top of that, he can play the middle infield positions. Got a lot of great positional versatility. So he'll definitely be on that Dodgers opening day roster. So I think the Dodgers bench at the end of the day, you're going to see Austin Barnes, Edwin Rios, Gavin Lux, and Hanser Alberto. But I do think you will see Jake Lamb get his opportunity for the Dodgers this year. At 1255 OPS this spring, two home runs. He looks really good at the plate. He mashes righty. So Jake Lamb will get his opportunity this year. I just don't think it'll come at the beginning of the season. But let me know down below in the comment section, who do you have on your Dodgers bench? Let me know down below. I've got Austin Barnes, Hanser Alberto, Gavin Lux, and Edwin Rios. But let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all latest Dodgers news and rumors all season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. really helps out the channel. And as always, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.